So when should you change your transmission fluid on your Toyota and Lexus? When should you not change your transmission fluid? I get this question every single day at the shop, on emails, on comments from you all about this particular subject. Wait, what about the transmission filter? What about this? What about that? So I decided to make this video to put every single piece of information you need to know about your Toyota and Lexus transmission service and everything in between in this one video. Let's get started. So when should you change your transmission fluid? First of all, there's two kinds of transmission fluids that Toyota use throughout their entire lineup. First one is WS fluid, which stands for World Standard. That is the newer fluid, started right around 2007 in majority of models. But here's how you actually tell. If you have no dipstick or you have a dipstick for the transmission, but the lever of the dipstick is black, you have WS fluid. Then the second type of fluid is Toyota T4 which is right here. This fluid is the older fluid and it has different properties. All the cars that have that fluid will have a dipstick and you'll know you have it if your dipstick is red in color. It's very simple and I'm gonna say it in the most basic terms. If you have WS fluid in your car, you change your transmission fluid every 60,000 miles or six years. If you have T4, you change the transmission fluid every 30,000 miles or three years. That is as simple as I can lay it. No questions asked, no nothing. You get to six years and your car have 20,000 miles, change the fluid. You get to three years with T4 and your car has 10,000 miles, change the fluid. The end of this discussion on when you should change them. So what fluid should you use? I get asked this question every single day. But wait, I know you, the, you'll say the original fluids are better, but what if I use this fluid? They say it's better and it's synthetic this and it's guaranteed for this much. Folks, let's keep it simple, period. You want your transmission to last, use the original fluid. You bought a Toyota. The, I hope the number one reason you bought your Toyota is because they make reliable cars. They're well engineered, conservative, maybe not fun, but they are reliable cars. So don't start trying to improve on them. Because I see people, oh, I want to use this fluid, but they say it can go 100,000 miles. Don't do that. Stick with the original fluid. The prices of the fluids are not that big. Prices change up and down with times, but that is the bottom line. This is not very expensive. And trust me, when you count the cost of doing every 60,000 miles on WS or 30,000 miles on T4, when you reach three, 400,000 miles, you're nowhere close to even covering the cost of labor to replace your transmission. It's not worth it. Don't risk it. Buy the originals from the dealership. Don't buy them online from an unknown source because counterfeits are plenty. Be careful. But wait, what if you are already over, way over these miles and now you're concerned, what do I do? Well, here is something that I will share with you from experience. It's not an exact science, but this is the general recommendation. If your car has well over 100,000 miles or basically over 100,000 miles, it is around 10 years old, you're on the original fluid, my recommendation to you, and this is the same recommendation I'll make if you walk in my shop and you ask me, should I replace my fluid? Don't replace it if you get to the smiles and the original fluid. The reason for that, we'll talk about a little bit in, later in the video. If you are at 100,000 miles, you're 10 years old, and you have not changed the fluid, don't change it. Leave it alone. Take the better, lesser risk of potentially things will happen later down the road, which we'll also talk about. But some of the possible problems that will be introduced if you change your fluid too late are slipping, harsh engagements, torque converter shutter, and, and extreme delays when you put it in drive and reverse. I see this over and over and over in the shop. In my current shop, I do not accept cars over 100,000 miles. The first thing we ask you when you come in the shop is, how many miles do you have? If it's 60, 70, 80, we're okay. 120, 130, 140. Has this transmission been serviced before? If the answer is no, then we will flat out tell you, 
We will not service your transmission. And we're not doing this because we're afraid or for your own good. And we will talk about this right now so you know why. So why is automatic transmission fluid like this? Why do you reach a certain mileage where you shouldn't replace it anymore? Well, there are many, many theories about them, and some people say this is wrong and this is right. Here is the gist of it and the bottom line. Transmission fluid is there for cooling, for lubrication, but it also acts as a hydraulic fluid. That's how automatic transmissions work. Well, in the normal operation of the transmission, you have debris collected that gets generated from the clutches, from if you have a transaxle, from the various gears and everything. That is normal. Transmissions will create debris. Now, this debris eventually will start clogging the valve body. So what is the valve body? Well, the valve body is, the, is kind of the hydraulic unit that controls where the fluid goes to engage which clutch to make all the shifts happen and all the magic happening. This valve body will have different names all over the industry. Toyota Land is called a valve body. This valve body has very tiny passages where the fluid goes and engages things. These tiny passages and the solenoids and everything get clogged with the debris over time and that's when the problems happen. Typical problem of a valve body is late shifting, sometimes slipping in extreme cases, but the most common stuff is late engagement, harsh engagements, Kind of, the shifts are not smooth, They're like the transmission judders before it shifts. These are the common things with the transmission fluid getting contaminated. Best answer is to keep the transmission as debris free as possible, right? Well, that's actually wrong and here is why. See, equally to the fluid needing to stay relatively clean so it wouldn't clog the valve body, you actually need some debris in this transmission to help the clutches engage as they age. See, the clutch material starts wearing down. All this debris that is suspended in the fluid actually ends up getting pushed against the clutch and it actually helps it engage. So this is the delicate balance with transmissions. You don't want too much debris where it starts clogging the valve body, but you don't want no debris as your clutches wear down and they get older. Now they have no help, nothing to help them. They're just on their own and eventually they start slipping and we have problems. So this is the point where you have to really understand leaving the transmission alone you could have some issues, but you have to mitigate your risk with them. That's why you get to a certain point where it's better to leave it alone. At least you might have a few symptoms here and there, but you won't have complete failure, especially at higher miles. So should you flush your transmission or should you just do a drain and fill? Well, there are many theories on this, but here is the bottom line. A, a fluid flush is basically something you connect to the transmission lines and it'll take all the fluid out of the transmission and add new fluid instead. So it replaces almost all the capacity of the transmission. So most people will say, well, that's the best option. And in my opinion, it is okay as long as you're using original fluid because majority of places that sell you a flush, they'll put 12 quarts, 14 quarts, 10 quarts, whatever the capacity of the transmission is, and they'll cycle that through the transmission. But the problem is majority of these places will want to be competitive with each other. So they're not gonna use original fluid and that's a problem. That's the first thing and the flush is too aggressive on older transmissions because again, remember what we talked about, you take all the debris out of this transmission that is older, now we might have new problems. That's the thing with the flush. Now people will say a drain and fill, just drain what's in the pan for Toyotas, add new fluid, set the level and life is good. People will say that that does not replace enough of the transmission fluid to keep things clean. But that's exactly the point. See, this is the tricky balance with transmission fluid. You don't want to replace too much of the fluid where now you have no debris to help the clutches, but you don't want to not replace it either. You want a middle solution, which is a drain and fill, which is actually what I recommend. Do your drain and fill at the intervals we talked about. You're not going to have issues because at that point, you're only taking some of that debris out, keeping the valve body area clean, but keeping the rest of the debris to help the clutches. Plus, when you add new transmission fluid, even at a small capacity, when you do a drain and fill, you're actually adding enough transmission fluid that the additives in the transmission fluid are renewed 
and life is good, there's a cleaning agent, detergent in the transmission fluid that's gonna actually clean things up in the valve body and life is wonderful. But you didn't add too much of that cleaning agent where now it's gonna start attacking the clutches and we have problems, especially in older transmissions. So should you keep changing your transmission fluid until it is bright red? Folks, don't do that. This is a mistake and because it never will to a point. People have this fascination of the clean fluid. Folks, WS fluid, as soon as you put it in a transmission, drive it for a few thousand miles, it'll turn darker by nature. And remember, that transmission fluid color is just a colorant. We're not about making your transmission fluid bright red. People will make this mistake, and I recommend you do not do. They will triple, quadruple change the transmission fluid in a row just to get it to be beautiful red fluid. That's actually not a good idea. I highly recommend you do not do that because that is actually very harmful for your transmission. Overdoing your transmission fluid is also not good. So what should you do if your car has high miles, well over 100,000 miles, and you're on the original fluid and you just watched this video? The most important thing is, please don't change your transmission fluid now. Analyze your risk. There is a higher risk when the transmission is older and has a lot of miles with the original fluid. There's a higher risk of it developing issues than it would if you leave it alone, believe it or not. Here's the potential issues that could arise when you all of a sudden you're at 170,000 miles and you watch this video and all of a sudden you decided, wait, let me change my transmission fluid. Here's what could happen. First, you could have all of a sudden abrupt shifting, harsh engagement, delayed engagement. So you put your car in drive, there's like a five, 10 second delay until it engages, but otherwise it'll work fine. And when the transmission is cold, things will be very bad. Very rough shifting, delayed shifting, not changing into gears that transmissions don't like when they're cold. Toyota transmissions in specific do not like cold. That's just how they are. Don't change the fluid. Eventually, it will get to a point where you might develop slipping. And the reason for that is the valve body is so clogged, it is not able to supply enough pressure to engage these old aging clutches, and now they start slipping. Here is the bottom line on this. Now you're worried, your blood pressure is up, Transmissions are very expensive. What do I do now? Here is the bottom line. Transmission fluid that is original on a Toyota or Lexus, you're likely not gonna get to 300,000 miles with this transmission. Again, you bought a Toyota to put high miles and drive it relatively reliably. You're possibly not gonna get there. Is it possible that you will? It is. It depends on many factors. But are you gonna get to 150,000 miles without a single issue that you feel? Yes, but then I go drive your car, all of a sudden I feel things that you have gradually gotten used to, but you go drive a car that's been serviced, now wait a second, this transmission is so much smoother, why isn't mine like that? That's when you notice. So the bottom line is service your transmission on time, but if you, unfortunately were not informed, believed in the sealed transmission, which by the way, that is absolute nonsense, change your fluid and you won't have issues. If you got caught in this situation, don't panic. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst is the only thing I can tell you. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna gradually get to that point, but the best thing is prevention, not waiting and hoping for the best. Change that transmission fluid, folks. What about the transmission filter? Well, this is another question that I get all the time, and here's the bottom line. If you change your, tra your Toyota and Lexus transmission fluid on time, 60,000 miles or 30,000 miles, whichever transmission fluid you have, you should not need to replace your transmission filter. Here's a short clip of a transmission filter that we took apart just for to see what's what. At 93,000 miles on a 2012 Toyota Camry that we pulled the transmission for a torque converter, here's how that filter looks like. After 93,000 miles, original fluid. Doesn't look half bad, does it? It's actually perfectly fine. We replace it just because we were right there. But normally, the cost of replacing a transmission filter is a lot higher than just replacing the fluid, and it's a complete waste of money. If it helps you sleep better at night, sure, but just know you're totally wasting your money and I don't recommend it. 
change your fluid on time, the filter will be fine. There are very rare cases where the filter will actually need the replacement. If you have severe contamination, you put the wrong fluid and something gelled up or whatever the case may be, you put the complete wrong fluid, like you put engine oil, for example, or antifreeze, then you gotta take everything, clean it down and replace it. But otherwise, there's no reason to replace it, folks. It's a total waste of money. That is a God honest truth. So here are the final recommendations, folks. And please, I would rather see you every six years on a transmission fluid than see you for a transmission replacement. The math doesn't add up. Transmission fluid drain and fill does not cost a fortune. You do it every six years or 60,000 miles on the newer transmissions, older transmissions every year, but the fluid costs less. It's simple math. You will never, even if you get to a million miles, you will never recuperate the cost of your transmission by not replacing the fluid. It's a lot cheaper to change the fluid, so do it. But at the same time that you're doing the fluid, don't overdo it. I hear people go, oh, I'm gonna just change my transmission fluid every oil change. That's actually not good for your transmission. And those folks, unfortunately, at some point, they're gonna find out, why do I have transmission problems? I replaced it every 5,000 miles. That's excessive. So here's the bottom line on, on replacing the fluid, the criteria. On WS fluid, don't change it less than 30,000 miles. That's the earliest you should change it if you want to do it early. On T4 transmission fluid, the earliest you want to change it is 15,000. Don't overdo it. This is the important thing. And the most important thing is don't change the transmission fluid on an overdue transmission, on a severely overdue, well over 100,000 miles original fluid. Leave it alone. That is a better risk to take than change in the fluid. Folks, I hope nobody ever have to deal with a bill of a transmission. Things happen, but don't make those things happen because of lack of knowledge or not knowing or simple negligence. That is something, unfortunately, some Toyota owners are guilty of. Oh, I bought a Toyota. I can neglect the maintenance. It'll still be fine. That is not the case, folks. And just, just like Toyotas are reliable, their parts are well built, their parts are extremely expensive. When you get into engine rebuild and transmission replacement, things get extremely expensive. And it kind of takes out, out of the window. You pay overpaying for a Toyota because they're reliable. It just takes it out of the window. It doesn't make sense. If you're not going to take care of it, there's no point of buying a Toyota to, because it's reliable. Be careful, folks. And last but not least, and possibly something very important, you will hear the term sealed transmission, sealed for life. You know what? The only thing that is guaranteed for the sealed for life transmission is failure. Because can you define the life? You know, that's like a little marketing thing there. What is the life? Forever? They never said sealed forever. There's no such thing as forever. Sealed for life. What is that life? The warranty period? 120,000 miles? Is that why you bought a Toyota? You only want to keep it till 80, 90,000 miles or 150? No, you bought a Toyota because you want to drive it till the wheels fall off, right? So there's no such thing as sealed transmission. The only thing that the sealed transmission means is it doesn't have a dipstick. But guess what? You can still replace the fluid. I have a video on that, many others do. Here's my link to my video if you want to know how to do it. It is not difficult, does require a little bit of understanding of how that works, but it's doable and many folks have done it and life is good. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.